This guy trashed his entire career in a single day. Something that is damn near almost an achievement. This is before our main man even had a chance to debut in the UFC. He got suspended for two years for using a ton of gear. Shocker. On Tuesday, Combat Sports Anti-Doping Agency, CSAD, announced that Luderbach, Bach, I think Luderbach is probably right. I suck with names notoriously, so if you're new to this channel, welcome. Accepted a 24-month sanction for violating the UFC's anti-doping policy. The test was administered June 8th, two weeks before Luderbach was set to face Sharo. Oh boy. Mago Medov? Uh, at UFC Saudi Arabia. Luderbach tested positive for the presence of 3-alpha hydroxy, 2-alpha methyl, 5-alpha androstan 17-1, metabolite of justan alone, which is an anabolic steroid. The 31-year-old was made aware of this positive test June 20th while at the host hotel two days before the event. According to the release, he admitted extensive use of the prohibited substance prior to his signing and because he didn't declare it ahead of time. Luderbach received a stronger a stronger penalty. He continues to say that I actually used juice three months ago and I had no idea I would sign the UFC contract. He wrote at the time, I could have hidden in the mountains of Thailand to hide as many people do and where they are not tested. But I prefer to take the risks and believe I was clean to fight. Okay, don't trash my hometown Thailand. That's not cool, man. Well, not really my home, but you get where I'm going. Seriously, he's not actually wrong. <laughs> this is something that a lot of fighters do in Thailand. I trained there with a French Muay Thai group. I'm not going to say the name because that's going to blow their cover. They would run training camps for three to four months, essentially, where all of these French fighters would come over and train in Thailand exclusively at their camp. During that time, it was very common for them to start some sort of performance dancing anabolic. And in fact, it was a large part of a good reason why I made friends with those guys super well. Of course, the benefit to going to Thailand is that you have the best Muay Thai fighters or masters as they call them but you also have a completely legal infrastructure for PED use you can just walk up to the pharmacy buy whatever you need anabolics like your standalone or ie masteron and walk back out go pin yourself go to training in all the same day it's a pretty great spectacular place to live I love it but why would a man like Luderbach start using Masteron specifically. It's really important to know is that this was a short term induction into the UFC. He wasn't actually supposed to get it for some time. It's a pretty big deal when someone gets inducted into the UFC, but they needed someone to fill a spot and he got picked out of sort of a random list of people from what I understand. Within two months, he got the opportunity of a lifetime. He was running Masteron before his invitation. He figured that he would be okay. Essentially, he stopped taking Masteron before he was even invited, but this was two months prior to that actually happening happening and him getting into the debut fight, which he now unfortunately wasn't able to fight in. Now, of course, nothing outside of the regulatory bodies are going to stop him from taking steroids, but the UFC is much different. And obviously they don't like the level of performance that comes with performance enhancing drugs, which <laughs> I think there's actually a lot going on there that they sort of brought an eye at, but hey, they don't like it. And obviously they didn't like this guy taking Mastron, so they banned him for two years. But if this guy was just training to join the UFC at one day, there's nothing to say that he can't allegedly take it and not show up clean. He was likely taking Mastron and a various amount of other anabolics to accumulate great deals of recovery and then output in performance to scale the ranks to get into the UFC. I'm not even sure, I, I'm 100% factually aware that many, many fighters do this in all disciplines, jujitsu, you name it. And Masteron's a great choice. You get zero water retention. You don't have to deal with any estrogen related problems. And as a dihydrotestosterone derivative, the neurological benefit of motor skill learning gets increased a little bit. And that ends up meaning you move your body better, something that fighters can really benefit from. So blasting Masteron while trying to get to that next level is pretty wise. However, if you're already at the next level, which is the UFC, this happens. So let's use this as a learning moment for some of you who maybe want to avoid getting popped hot for a drug in the future for educational purposes only. The detection window of just standalone is quite lengthy. This metabolite specifically can be detected anywhere from three to eight weeks after use. These are through common methods that are cheap and relatively accessible by almost every nation. Gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, and liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry, LCMS testing. You've seen this because you likely have gotten blood work done at the doctor. This is what they do. And uh, in, in your examples as well. Now the, the metabolites generally 
actually last a lot longer than the main compound or the parent compound. And this is why WADA usually tests for the metabolites more than they do the actual steroid itself, because this, this metabolites are what's going to be there for a prolonged period of time. They still test for the parent compound, but it's the metabolites that they're going to be kind of giving them away if they're trying to hide their usage. So standalone is tricky because it's not just metabolized into one or two compounds. There's almost three different metabolites of drostanolin. There's actually, I believe, more, but three that we're well aware of. Primarily, there's two alpha methyl, five alpha androstan, three alpha ol, 17 one, there's two methyl 5-alpha androstan, three beta ol 17 one, and then the one that he had popped hot for was three alpha hydroxy, two alpha methyl 5-alpha androstan 17 one. These metabolites are the main targets for testing in anti-doping measures. And there's a, a few studies that specifically were testing for these metabolites. One study done by Polet et al. reported that drostanolone and its metabolites could be detected in urine for several weeks after the last administration, particularly in its conjugated form of three alpha hydroxylated metabolites this did stand true to the test of time this is usually available in urine for about eight ish weeks another study was in 2014 with strom et al and he emphasized that the sensitivity of the current detection methods allows for the identification of drostanolone metabolites for up to eight weeks after administration. So for our lying natties out there, what would be a better option to not get popped and banned for two years? Well, for one, you could use Masteron. It's a really great compound, actually. It's just giving yourself enough time to clear the metabolites, you would be just fine. Also using testosterone at a physiological normal dose with that to make sure that you're not flooring your testosterone and mitigating any estradiol to literally nothing. Great option. Testosterone, because it's a bioidentical hormone, pretty hard to detect on any sort of drug tests as long as you're not going above your TDE ratio. But something that might work better in the short term, if you don't have a long off season to approach your, you know, fight camp or whatever with, is prostanozole. 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 <laughs> it's a drug that not many bodybuilders of the sort of new age would even be aware of or understand or recognize what it is. And it's essentially the pro drug of Winstrol. It was snuck back in the day in supplements and gave them sort of this reputable potent effect that of course, when users stopped, they would lose that effect and then some because they were likely hypogonadal and then they would come back to the product and get the great effects again and then it would turn it into this vicious cycle. Brilliant idea for a company selling protein powder. Now, this might be a better selection for someone who's interested in avoiding labs being pulled and then popping hot on those labs or urine samples. Well, I actually, again, I think the best compound is probably just going to be testosterone and then modulating your testosterone dose around the events that you have, but that's besides the point. This is great because you can quickly manipulate it and it comes off as a drier compound. It's non-estrogenic and doesn't have any sort of estrogenic relation. The detection time for prostanozole is actually just about 10 days to at most a couple of weeks. It's metabolites too. This leaves users a very small window of needing to be off before their competition, which is super advantageous because obviously leading up to the competition, you're training quite a bit. And then once you get around the window of the competition or the fight, you usually stop training quite a bit to allow your body to recover and then super compensate that recovery with a greater degree of strength and mobility. In that period of time, you obviously don't need to exceed normal recovery standards, so you can pull something out when you're resting, get your normal recovery, still create the adaptations you had from your training camp from using excess drugs, and then go straight into the, the fight itself. Also, things like growth hormone would be really utilizable here. I mean, really utilizable. The thing is, is that it's only useful if you don't have a weight cap to worry about. And in this case, I think the individual we're talking about did have a weight cap, so he would have to worry about using growth hormone and that inflating water retention and that obviously is going to negate him trying to get to a lower weight cap so that he can fight at a better body standing that's uh that's about it if you're ever curious or if you want to know more discord groups down below in the description we do all sorts of crazy and wacky things there it's a great way to support the channel you'll get access to me and several other coaches who do help fighters and bodybuilders and strongmen in the group itself we'll talk to you in the next video